The life of Jane Russell was one that was filled with both triumph and tragedy. As a star of classic Hollywood films such as The Outlaw and Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, she captivated audiences with her stunning beauty and commanding presence on the silver screen. Yet, behind a glamorous facade was a woman who faced her own personal struggles and heartbreaks. Ernestine Jane Geraldine Russell was born in Bemidji, Minnesota on June 21, 1921. Her parents were a former actress and an office manager. When Jane was just nine months old, the family moved to Southern California where she spent her childhood as a tall, fun-loving tomboy. Despite her parents' hope for academic success, Jane was known for her rambunctious spirit more than her study habits in high school. After graduation, her mother insisted that Jane attend finishing school to refine her manners and social skills. Jane, however, was resistant to the idea. After much discussion, Jane and her mother compromised and she was allowed to attend drama school instead. There she discovered her passion for acting and soon caught the eye of a talent scout. Interestingly, Jane's mother had named her Jane Russell at birth because she believed the name would look good up in lights. In September 1939, Jane started taking acting lessons at the Max Reinhardt School of Drama. However, instead of attending classes regularly, she spent more time at the bowling alley across the street. Jane eventually dropped out of the school, but she quickly changed her mind and enrolled at Maria Ospenskaya School of Dramatic Arts a week later. Her passion for acting was strong, and she persevered with her studies. Just six months later, Jane was on her way to her first screen test at 20th Century Fox. Unfortunately, the screen test didn't result in any offers, and Jane was disappointed. Despite this setback, she was determined to become an actress, and she kept trying. However, no one else called for a screen test, and Jane's hope began to fade. Finally, Jane came to the realization that she would have to give up her dream and find a real job. She became a chiropractist assistant and worked hard to make ends meet. However, even as she worked, her desire to become an actress continued to grow and she never gave up hope that someday she would have her chance to shine. Then one day, her mother called to tell her that an agent had been calling every day. However, Jane was no longer interested in pursuing her pipe dreams. Despite her reluctance, the agent persisted and finally convinced Jane to take a phone call. On the other end of the line was Howard Hughes, who wanted to test her for a role in a picture. The next day, Jane was at the studio, meeting with Howard Hawks, who would direct the outlaw for Hughes. Jane's part in the Western was as a half-Irish, half-Mexican girl seeking revenge against Billy the Kid for killing her brother. She attempts to kill the outlaw with a pitchfork, but is raped by him as retribution. The 19-year-old stunning figure and devil-may-care attitude may have won her the role, but Jane didn't care. She was now a working actress. During the filming of The Outlaw in Arizona, she was photographed by national magazines such as Look, Life, and Photoplay. Her low-cut peasant blouse and skirt costume highlighted her curves, making her an instant sensation. She later remarked that she didn't even know her boobs were bulging out until she saw herself on magazine covers and centerfolds for the next five years. During the production of the film, director Howard Hawks left the set, leaving Howard Hughes to take over. The film's content was so risque that it took two years for the Hayes office censors to approve it. Film critic Pauline Kael called it the definitive burlesque of Cowtown dramas, with Jane Russell's character hitting Billy the Kid over the head with a coffee pot and putting sand in his water flasks. In return, the Kid ties her up with wet thongs and leaves her out in the sun. Walter Huston and Thomas Mitchell's performances added a bit of relief from the amorous antics. Jane Russell's dream of becoming a working actress was put on hold after the premiere of her film, The Outlaw, in 1943. Despite its success, the movie was stuck in red tape and wasn't released until four years later. 
During his time, Hughes, who owned Russell's contract, refused to lend her out to other studios. Despite the delay in her career, Russell remained famous. After five years of inactivity, she married football star Robert Waterfield and Hughes finally agreed to loan her out for the film The Young Widow. However, the role of a weepy widow did not suit Russell's strengths. It wasn't until she starred opposite Bob Hope in the 1948 film Pale Face that Russell found her stride. In the movie, she played a strong, sharpshooting, straight woman to Hope's timid, funny man, and the film was a hit. Finally, Russell's dream of being a working actress had become a reality once again. Jane Russell's career finally took off after Howard Hughes bought Radio Keith Orpheum in the same year. She showcased her singing and acting skills in his kind of woman and Macau, both opposite Robert Mitchum. In the Las Vegas story, she demonstrated her appeal as a dark, sexy leading lady. Russell also showed off her comic talent in two more films with Bob Hope, Road to Bali and Son of Paleface. However, it was in 1953's Gentlemen Prefer Blondes starring opposite Marilyn Monroe where Russell gave what Leonard Maltin called a sly, knowing comic performance, proving she could hold her own against the electric Monroe. Russell became an audience favorite in movies throughout the 1950s and 1960s. It wasn't until 1970 when she took over for Elaine Stritch in the Broadway musical Company that Russell found another vehicle suited to her many talents. Playing a blousy, boozy broad, Russell showed off her ability to sing, dance, act, and have a laugh at her own expense. Jane Russell, a Hollywood icon known for her beauty, talent, and humor, is remembered by many for her memorable appearances on film and in commercials. Despite being introduced by Bob Hope as the two and only Jane Russell, she proved to be much more than that. Although many remember Russell for her commercials for Playtex bras, which celebrated her full figure, she was much more than that. Jane Russell passed away on February 28, 2011, at the age of 89 due to respiratory-related illness. She will always be remembered as a Hollywood symbol who was able to simultaneously laugh at herself and enjoy being the star that she was. Rest in peace and goodbye Jane Russell.